If a person is always hurting you, then Jesus is not at the center of your relationship. Such relationship is not healthy for your physical, emotional, mental or spiritual well-being. God wants us to trust him regarding our relationships with others. So I want you to ask yourself if the relationships you're in really reflect him. So how do you know if your relationships truly reflects God? You will know if Jesus is at the center of them. Yes, because our best relationships are the ones that have Jesus at the center of them. If God is not present in the relationship you're in, it may be time to reevaluate the relationship, or at least change the way you interact with each other. If I'm to ask you to make a list of all the people who have caused you pain, I'm pretty sure you can write out a number of people who have hurt you. These people may include family members, neighbors, friends, co-workers, or even someone from church. So how does God want you to respond to people who caused you pain? What do you do if the person who hurt you is a very close family member? It could be your mother, or father, or siblings, or your spouse. What do you do? What happens when the person is a close friend? your childhood friend or your best friend. How do you handle this situation? Should you continue with them? Or should you just walk away from them because of the pain they caused you? Well, the Bible has answers to all our life's questions and problems. In some areas of Christian life, we struggle to find out how God wants us to respond to certain things. But that's not the case here because God's instructions are detailed. Let's look at what the Word of God says in Luke chapter 6 verses 27 through 36. But to you who are listening I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. This passage speaks to this issue in great detail. As Christians, we struggle to find out how God wants us to react to some situations in some areas of our life. But that's not the case here. God's instructions are detailed. In Luke 6 verse 36, Jesus said be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. This is a specific example and an ultimate standard of how we are expected to treat those who have hurt us. But please do not misinterpret this. Don't ever allow yourself to endure any unnecessary pain in your relationships. Some people do this because they believe it's our duty or because it brings us to a place of meekness that honors Christ. No, don't do that. It's important that we apply godly wisdom to all relationships we're in. It's important. Though the Bible says we should take up our cross and follow Christ. But please pray for discernment to understand what God is really telling you through the pain you're experiencing. God is faithful, and there's no unrighteousness in him. So the more you study and meditate on the word of God, the more God will speak to you about the relationships you're in. The Bible says in Psalm 1 that those who delights and meditates on the word of God are blessed. God will help you to align your relationships by speaking to you through his word. Maybe you are around people who are negatively influencing your life, saying painful words and all sort of bad things to you. That is not what God wants for you, because violent tempers can create traps in your life that God may not be calling you to be part of. When you seek God more when it comes to your relationships, you will begin to give less of yourself to people addicted to gossip and slander. Because being in that space is not only not uplifting, but also doesn't reflect Christ. So when you begin to give less of yourself and limit the influence of the person that's hurting you, 
It means that you no longer give them the permission to take up so much space in your life. You may say that but God want us to love others as ourselves. Yes, but giving less of yourself to them doesn't mean that you will no longer love, forgive or pray for that person. God wants us to trust him regarding our relationships with others. So ask yourself if the relationships you're in really reflect God. If it doesn't, then it means Jesus is not at the center of the relationship. When God does not want you with someone, you have to let them go. Sometimes, you have to unapologetically get rid of all things and people and situations that no longer belong in the new season of your life. You are in your new season right now. You might be bargaining, well Lord if I could just stay with him a little bit longer, things could get better, he could change. Many of us have two eyes and we still can't see that, that some people don't belong in our lives. Despite all the how these people have been showing you who they are, you keep giving excuses for them. You know, God sends us bold signs and wonders what we'll choose to make out of them. Sometimes, he expects us to change our environment and our surroundings so we can reach the ultimate level of being blessed. And if you're going to reach your destiny, you have to learn to kiss things and people goodbye. You're not going to understand everything that happens. People may walk away. Life may not turn out the way you thought. Are there people in your life pulling you back yet you're unwilling to walk away from them? What you're unwilling to walk away from is where you'll get stuck. If you don't kiss the wrong people goodbye, you'll never meet the right people. And if someone is not adding value to your life, making you better, and pushing you towards your destiny, you need to make a change. And sometimes it's just a new season. The friends you had five years ago may not be the friends you need now. Everybody can't go where you're going. It doesn't mean they're not good people. You've just outgrown them right now. You're going at a faster pace. If you continue hanging around them, it will limit your growth. Sometimes we're waiting for God to change things, but God is waiting for us to make a decision. You have to put your foot down and say, I am not coming into my new season in life with old thinking. I am kissing the chip on my shoulder goodbye. I'm kissing the guilt goodbye. I'm kissing a barely get by mentality goodbye. When you kiss it goodbye, this means in your mind you're putting an end to it. You're saying, this addiction is not going to control me anymore. I am free. Yes, you are free indeed. Well, you've made a lot of mistakes. Yes, but I've kissed them goodbye. I am not living in regrets and beating myself up. I am forgiven, I am redeemed, and I'm wearing a robe of righteousness. You've always been in dysfunction, that's how you were raised. You've always been hot-tempered, you've always been angry in your life. Yes, that's how I was raised, but that's not who I am. I'm kissing that goodbye, I'm putting an end to what's been passed down. I'm breaking the generational curse, and I'm starting the generational blessing in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to announce to that dysfunction, mediocrity, depression, bitterness, anger, I'm kissing you goodbye. I won't be seeing you anymore in my life. We are parting ways, hate to say it that I'm not gonna miss you. Kiss loneliness goodbye, and pray and say, Father, thank you that you have somebody awesome already headed my way. Thank you that the right person is chasing me down. Goodbye to lack struggle not having enough you were in my yesterday but sorry you're not in my today father thank you that i will lend and not borrow thank you that whatever i touch will prosper and succeed in jesus name amen maybe you need to kiss goodbye to the way you see yourself inferior unattractive not a good personality not talented enough kiss that wrong self-image goodbye Victory starts in your thinking, abundance, health, freedom, it starts in our mind. You can't think the same way and expect different results. Start embracing who God says you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a masterpiece. You have been crowned with favor. You have royal blood flowing through your veins. Nobody in this world has your same fingerprints. You didn't come up in assembly line. You are an original, one of a kind, made in the image of Almighty God. I wonder where you could be at this time next year if you'd start kissing things goodbye, kiss the offense goodbye. 
Quit letting people hurt your feelings. Quit letting what they say ruin your day. Tone it out. They have a right to say what they want. You have a right to ignore it. You shouldn't let that get down in your spirit. With joy, I'm praying that these people at work will quit talking about me. I don't want to discourage you, but they may never quit talking about you. They are jealous of the favor and blessing on your life. Take it as a compliment because they don't talk about average people. They talk about exceptional people. They don't talk about people that aren't doing anything. They talk about people that are taking new ground, people that are making a difference, people that stand out. It's a test. Yes, it is a test. God is seeing if you're ready to go to the next level. So are you going to get upset, bitter, and start thinking about how you're going to pay them back? Or are you going to kiss it goodbye and keep running your race and enjoying your life in Christ? Those adversaries are getting you prepared for your destiny. Where you're going, there will be opposition, critics, people trying to pull you down. The good news is, no weapon formed against you will prosper. They cannot stop you. Because the forces that are for you are greater than the forces that are against you. Stay on the high road and stay focused on what God has put in your heart. You don't have time to get distracted by all the negative chatter. What people think about you is none of your business. What they're saying shouldn't concern you. There'll always be somebody that doesn't like you. Kiss it goodbye and keep moving forward. Now, there may be some relationships you need to kiss goodbye. And I'm not talking about your husband or your wife. Your time is too valuable to spend it with peace stealers, people that try to get you all riled up. Or with dream killers, people that tell you what you can't become. Or with compromisers, people that cause you to give in to temptation. Naomi's daughter-in-law, Opa, wasn't necessarily a bad person. In fact, she was a good person. Naomi loved her. They had spent years together. But Naomi recognized that Opa's part in her story was over. She didn't try to talk her into staying. If someone is supposed to be in your life, you can't make them leave and if someone leaves easily, they're not supposed to be there. Quit trying to talk people into staying. You don't have to convince anyone to love you, to call you, or to come see you a care. You are a gift, you are a prize, you have something amazing to offer. If they don't want to be there, that's a sure sign they're not supposed to be there. God has already ordained people who can't leave you people that want to celebrate you, people that love spending time with you. If somebody wants to leave, let them leave. Your destiny is not tied to the people that walked away. Be respectful, but kiss the opus goodbye. God told Abraham to leave his relatives and move to a different city. I'm sure he loved his relatives. For a season, everything was fine. But when God was about to promote Abraham and do something big in his life, he knew his relatives and the people where he lived wouldn't be able to handle it. The people closest to you may not see the greatness in you. When they're familiar, they can dismiss you as just being ordinary. Sometimes you have to kiss people goodbye so you can become all you were created to be. Yes, kiss them goodbye. Don't let people talk you out of what God put in your heart. When you come to the end of life, you're not going to have to stand before people and give an account. You're going to stand before God. I would rather disappoint people than disappoint God. I would rather hurt a few feelings than to miss my destiny. Is there something or someone you need to kiss goodbye? A hurt, a bad attitude, an area that you're compromising in. It doesn't belong to your future. The Apostle Paul said, Forgetting what lies behind, I press to the high calling. If there's a high calling, that means there's a low calling. You can go through life holding on to hurts or wrong attitudes with people that are not good for you, but that will keep you from new levels, from the high calling that belongs to your life. So it's time to start kissing things goodbye. Kiss that failure goodbye. This is a new day. Kiss guilt goodbye. You've been forgiven. Kiss the bad break goodbye. God has something better. If you'll do this, I believe and declare you're about to come into the high calling. New doors are going to open, new relationships, favor, healing, breakthroughs, and the fullness of your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen.